to the show. This is our final episode of the calendar year 2023. We will be back in January, but we thought that we would um, have an episode here uh, just before the holiday break. Um, and this is the third time that we are doing some sort of celebratory holiday-ish uh, kind of episode. Uh, it's kind of difficult to kind of space these um, out with the uh, with Halloween, Thanksgiving, and the holidays. But regardless, we wanted to plan to um, highlight the previous year and to give what we're looking forward to in the next year. So, Owen, how would you categorize 2023 as a whole in a couple words? As Jules said in our previous take, I would like to, to elaborate on that and say 2023 has been a really bad roller coaster. And quoting Jules, it's like getting pushed down the stairs in a cardboard box and hoping to have fun. And I'd like to say that I'm at the bottom of the stairs right now. I'm recovering, but man, did falling down the stairs hurt. In summation. Alex, how was your- 2023 your... was like a box of chocolates, but the friends we made along the way, you know what I mean? One of those like Christmas box of chocolates where yeah, you get like, all the good ones and the bad ones are kind of left over. Yeah, and you're but like, oh, I don't want to throw them away. Life gives you the lemon ones. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you just got to keep swimming. You know what I mean? You got to hang in there. You That's know what I mean? That's the tree. You just got to keep, you just got to one foot in front. You know what I mean? So, Alex, how is how your, your 2023? That was painful. Um, <laughs> Did we bring a little bit of chaos into your life? I think, as Jules described, uh, at times a bit incoherently um, and all over the place, I think uh, uh, I would say, at times uh, very, very strong in growth, very strong in um, a lot of changes and a lot of uh, difficulties. But overall, I mean, it was better than than years prior and in, in, in some in some regards um normalcy has occurred at least in the in the past year so thankful for that um it's like if you were you know in like you know you're you, you're like you know 2020 was like you're 14 2022 you're like 15 and now it's like you're like 17 you know it's it's kind of it's that like gradual kind of rise there was also a pandemic except the fact that i am now 26 so this may be our last conventional episode, but we do plan to release an episode this upcoming Wednesday on the 20th to celebrate the end of the semester. Um, you will not be seeing us, but you'll be hearing us. Um, we'll do a, a Spotify only or, you know, on our other platforms other than YouTube, uh, an audio only episode and, and, you know, just kind of unwinding and kind of debriefing after uh, such a long semester. Obviously we won't be doing it live uh, or anything like that. So there will be some pre-stress conversation uh, as we head towards the end of the semester, but we hope that all of you enjoy that episode as well. Uh, that will be on uh, Wednesday, December 20th. You get to use your imagination. You do? Yes. You get to imagine, close your eyes and imagine us in the room talking with you. After the semester is to over, you. so that we can actually all just relax. But it's the true immersive Studio Five Nine Five experience. Imagine you're here. We have yeah. some cool chairs. It's like you're sitting in and I'm watching. and I'm holding your hand and I'm and I'm and talking I'm you through you, it and I'm talking you through it. We thought that we would highlight the best of 2023 because there have been a lot of uh, good moments, a lot of. Uh, good positive things that have happened this year a lot of silly things a lot of um things worth remembering out of this year and a lot of it has to do with media now you know that we're doing a video podcast and we do a lot of things in the media space um we consume a lot of media we also consume a lot of media and so uh, we're, me. we're gonna start off by kind of doing a mis mishmash of all the um, movies and TV shows and video games that we've consumed over the past year that have actually released this year. So anything that came out in 2022 that we happen to come across this year, unfortunately won't be a part of the list, but we will obviously talk about um, a lot of things that actually did come out this year that impacted us in some way. And it's not a tier list. We, we've been doing a lot of tier lists. This is not a tier list. This is a discussion. This is just a free the best. Form discussion. These are just the things that th we think stood out throughout the year. So let's start off with some video games. Uh, we are 
people that enjoy gaming from time to time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there have been a lot of good video games, a lot of um, follow-ups to previous video games from previous years. And so what video games have we come across this year that have brought us joy? I know Jules has been... I, there's been one that's very dear to my heart. It's the best game that's come out in recent memory. It's called Rise of Kong Skull Island. It has the best graphics that I've ever seen it's, in my it's life. It's really high quality. It the is. other game that I've been playing the most, especially for the story, is a yeah. game called Gollum. Gollum is amazing. Gollum has a great story. Gollum like made me cry. You really feel like Gollum. You really during feel like Gollum. Has, has... It's just painful the whole time. Yeah, it's really, it's really <laughs> painful, and it's really hard. It's really hard to play through. On a serious note. On a serious note. We should, we'll put like the Metacritic scores. Those games are awful. Those games are actually awful. Gollum's awful, Kong Skull Islands. Masterpiece. Let's, I mean, let's be real. They put the people who made the Kong Skull Island game, they made, they're they making two games at once and they had a year to make both. They're the same so. people that made the new Walking Dead game. Yeah, and both of them were good. On, back on topic, my personal favorite game of this year just broke. was Armored Core 6. Because I've been a big fan of mechs ever since I was like a little kid. And seeing the trailer as a teenager, like, I did a backflip because, like, I hadn't seen a mech in so long. And I was like, I forgot that existed. What I remember you coming flip? into work with your, your Steam Deck and going, Guess what I just spent my first paycheck on? And you, oh, you showed us the game. <laughs> Jules was, Jules was so into, excited. I came into work, I was like, <gasps> Look at the armor customization. <laughs> they, they were very excited. You can have tank legs. That's what I remember. You can from have, this. That's what I was really excited about because I want to have tank legs IRL linked to GoFundMe to get me tank legs. I, that, that won't be linked. That below, won't be linked. Unfortunately, we don't have that. But J Jules will find some way Jules to communicate will, that Jules to find all a way. of you. Telepathically, who knows? Uh, I actually haven't played that many games that have come out this year specifically. Um, I've more so caught up on games that I thought that I should enjoy. Um, one of them being Hades. Um, Ooh, I'm not, I haven't played that one yet. It's great. It's great. It's been a, it's been a good experience. I've also, um, at the behest of my girlfriend, have played Hollow Knight a little bit. Uh, I've really enjoyed that. Mm. I, I have to I have to get back into it. I haven't played for in a couple, in a couple weeks. Um, Hollow Knight is beautiful. Yes. I love that game's art. Very good. Very well done. Um, I, I think the one game that I have of note here that I actually played, other than like, you know, sports games, which always are the same every year, unfortunately, um, is Super Mario Brothers Wonder. And... Seeing Plants. Yeah, so that's that's all that I know about that's the game. Which is singing, I will say, crying. I will say, the, the one plant that constantly like talks to you and sings makes me somewhat uncomfortable. The one it has the it has the like weirdly realistic just male yeah. voice. Yeah, they gave the flower. They add these little flower characters in the I game. I don't know about this. In the new Mario game, there's these little flower. Sorry. No, 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 no. There, go on. There's these little flower characters everywhere, and all the other characters in Mario they talk like. Wow. Like, like just silly, but the flower just sounds like a history teacher. <laughs> the flower <laughs> just talks to you and goes, you're, you're doing so well. Oh, <laughs> and, and, you that's know, not even an exaggeration. The, the it it just is, sounds weirdly human. Like, it's just odd. It feels like, it feels like, like so, no, it feels like, like none of that. It feels like an uncomfortable figure is coming up behind you and like grabbing your shoulder and going, "You're doing so well. You're doing really uh, good." <laughs> like it just. I've not heard of this. Uh, it, it, it's not. It's not of the same caliber, but like, I can't help but but think I, about this because I I enjoy this game so much. But it reminds me of Flowey from Undertale, um, <laughs> because it's just like it's it's, it's, it's a friendly so it's a friendly flower that tries to guide you, and. It is the Undertale it, fans are gonna go crazy. It gives me somewhat discomfort whenever he's just like, "You're doing a good job." Matt Pat's or, gonna drop a video. <laughs> um, but overall, um, pretty good game. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's better than Super Mario 3D World. Um, probably because of the 3D elements of, of that game make it stand out a lot more. But with Wonder, it's a lot of... Uh, you can tell that a lot of creativity came into it. It's silly. Um, it is really silly. It's I a really fun game. They, they don't take themselves... Because I know this is one of the first Mario games where they let the team like kind of 
do they, more creative they, stuff and have mm-hmm. more fun with it rather than being on like a deadline and yeah, yeah. which I I haven't played it but I've I've heard good things. And, and they also the way to go. they also took uh, from what I read a couple of weeks ago they took the profits from the Super Mario Brothers movie and put it into Wonder so that it could look more like the movie. I also so, didn't see the movie. I so. think I think well, that's a good idea. Solid. I like I like the movie. And yeah, yeah I, I would say the graphics are really well. I I think that the the some areas of that game lack, but it doesn't make it any worse of a game. In the next Mario game, Chris Pratt will be a playable character. I, no, 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 I no, would no, absolutely no, love no, that. No, 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 no. Super Mario. He does not would, need to be in would, Smash Bros. Chris that. Pratt does not need to be in <laughs> Smash Bros. <laughs> Chris Pratt will be in Smash Bros. Oh, he will Chris be Pratt. If they put Chris Pratt in Smash Bros. Before they put Waluigi in Smash Bros. <laughs> I will never. I swear, I will never buy another Nintendo product. But what if it's a uh, Waluigi model as Chris Pratt? Yeah, don't put that thought in my head. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that being planted. What would you do? What would you do if they announced live action Mario and you looked at the cast list and Waluigi was Chris Pratt? And Mario wasn't Chris Pratt. I Mario, knew I would be okay with Mario not being I would this is I mean Waluigi would be or Wario would be Danny DeVito. We can we should discuss this. This movie. is the difference. This we should discuss this movie. Yeah. Discuss this is I, we got from the games and we're I feel okay. like okay. Peach, Peach okay. would be Margot Robbie. Anyways, and um, and who would who would be uh, or what video game would be at least one of your favorites from this year? Well, I tried Starfield, and I did not like it. And I'm sorry to say that I did not enjoy Starfield. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. The game that I played the most this year was Forza. And the new DLC came out, I believe, earlier this year for Forza Horizon 5. Am I correct in saying that? I think it was like late last year, but okay. you're fine. Within the past year, let's With, say. Let's, within a year, the I DLC might be came wrong. out. Um, I enjoyed that. I played that. I played the new Forza Motorsport. I enjoyed that thoroughly, but I didn't get too far into it. I tried. I downloaded Dead Space, the new Dead Space game, mm. and I uninstalled it last night before I played it because it was one of those that just kind of took up space. Oh, I I'd, I'd been playing Borderlands and I needed to uninstall it so I could download the <laughs> DLC. That's I, besides the I point. I support though. your decision. Yeah, I needed Border- to uninstall it to download the DLC. I said I would play it yesterday Border- at work. I was like, I'm gonna play it and I'll come back and give my thoughts. And I forgot about it, so I haven't played the new Dead Space game. Um, but yeah, I know Starfield. A lot of people really enjoyed it. I I gave it a, an honest shot. It was too much for me. It also didn't run well on the Xbox. It was like locked to 30 frames per second. So I said, well, I enjoyed it. I gave it a shot. It's not for me. It was I not. I didn't play, you know what I was playing? Armored, Armored Core, Core 6. And you also been playing apparently Robocop too, right? Oh, yes. It's a first person shooter, but you pretty much just play as Robocop going around enforcing the law. 80s cyborg Robocop power fantasy. And it's very accurate to the movies. So with movies and shows, what have we seen this year? I... If anything, because I know that like pre-recording, uh, we didn't come up with that many shows that we really enjoyed this year or movies. Yeah. Because I didn't see most of the movies. Now I can talk. I can talk on Five Nights at Freddy's. That's one that I saw okay. recently. I saw it in the past about week and a half, and I really. It, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. I watched Five Nights at Freddy's. I have not seen Mario. I did not see Barbie. I did not see Oppenheimer. I feel ashamed to say this because those are. I didn't see the new Spider-Man movie. I don't like the movie theater. I don't. I don't enjoy being in a room with a very large screen and it's very loud. I don't enjoy that. It's very overstimulating. For, for, for certain movies, especially, I can see why that would be the case, and and I'm why so that would glad be overwhelming. We picked movies to talk about that we all totally have seen. Um, uh, I don't have the attention span. This is where I can pop in. This is uh, this is um, Alex's domain. But for, so, so five, do you mind five nights at Freddy's? Yeah, go ahead. Quick, quick, my quick five nights at Freddy's. It was very good. I know a lot of critics didn't like it because it's like, oh, they played with the the, the animatronics played with kids. Who cares? They're kids. They're kids. In they, the kids locked in suits. It's fine. They're gonna act like kids. They're gonna act Spoiler like kids. Alert! Alert! No, that's everyone kind of knows that. Okay. They they well, discuss it. Go. I think it's in one of the trailers. Yeah, I'm not gonna spoil the ending. I won't do that. I, we're becoming film bros. No, if I was if I was to be a film bro, I'd say, wow, I saw this really great indie movie this year. It was a very good um, art film. Well, I saw a great art film this year. Not me, like three years ago. You're wearing tweed right now, man. It's actually corduroy. 
Continue about FNAF at Freddy's. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it was really good. I enjoyed it, and I'm going to hand it over to Alex. But what I'm going to say is Five Minutes at Freddy's, I would watch it again. I'm glad they set it up for a sequel, but I'm also glad how they ended it because it leaves you feeling satisfied. So they set it up to if it didn't take off, they, you know, wouldn't make another one. And if it did take off, they could make another one. So I'm glad that they're going to make another Five Nights at Freddy's. Quick fire out of town, what would you give it? Like eight. I gave it like an eight. Oh, okay. It wasn't like, it wasn't the best movie I've ever seen. It was kind of like a, you know, campy, oh. silly horror movie. So this was actually the first year that I've been back to the theaters. Um... In a while, I think I may have seen one movie like two years ago, oh, and then yeah. before that, I hadn't been to the theaters in, in a long time. And so, um, I did watch the Super Mario Brothers movie. I think that it was good. It was charming, um, and uh, it did a lot of. It was a very fan service friendly movie. Seth a Rogen lot of doggy cock. Lot <laughs> of inside jokes for Mario fans. Didn't it gross over like a billion dollars? Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, it opened the doors to some uh, more Seth awful. Rogen as Donkey Kong. I don't, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Seth Rogen, but it's gonna open the doors to like, we get a, you know, a Terraria movie or a Minecraft Live action movie. Like, Seth I don't Rogen. need that. We don't yeah. need this. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, I will say <laughs> that, later. that will be, I think, the downside of this. Now, the upside I'm hoping, and we can get more into this, is other N Nintendo franchises getting a, m a movie either animated or live action in the coming years. Depending on how they execute that and how much Nintendo is actually involved in the handling of that. Are you raising your hand? Yeah, I, I think that'll be good, but go ahead. I agree with you, and I'm glad that we're going to be getting, as you mentioned in er an earlier episode, we're going to be getting a Legend of Zelda movie. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to these. If there's one thing that I don't want, it's a Pikmin movie. That would be <laughs> the worst, because it would be like trolls all over again. Okay? Oh, I like trolls. Yeah. trolls. No, I'm saying trolls is good, but I'm saying that Nintendo, I feel like, is going to copy a template and just be like, mm -hmm. people like Pikmin, and we're going to like throw them everywhere, and it'll just be all over the place. Yeah. So I think... Opening the doors for other Nintendo franchises, I'm looking forward to, to see how they choose to go about it and open up those worlds. But we're gonna get absolutely awful movies like Pikmin and, and like Wii Sports Resort. Like we're gonna be getting like, <laughs> like terrible not, franchises. Not every video game needs to be a movie. Cause no. you, can, you can do it well. Like the Mario movie, it was like a really good if, movie adaptation. I can tell you right game, now, like, if we do wise. get a Wii Sports Resort movie, Something is terrible. That's something that would be on We're Netflix. In the wrong timelines. That's well, something that would be on Netflix. That's one of those like choose your own adventure shows. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say the one show before I go back into the movies because that'll be a segue. I hadn't experienced this franchise of a of a TV series. Is it The Bachelor? Yes. I until knew until it. this year, I the Golden knew Bachelor. It. I knew I, it. I have not seen an entire <laughs> episode of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Were you so like edge of your seat? I can say for a fact, as someone that hasn't ever inhibited the space of media, um, I actually enjoyed it. I wasn't glued to the end of my seat for uh, or on the edge of my seat for you know, a lot of it. I think that a lot of it was actually wholesome given the premise of this season. I feel like, from at least my perspective, any other Bachelor or Bachelorette season probably would have been insufferable for me. Mm -hmm. um, but the context of it being older adults and them being part of this like That's goofy, right. I remember seeing this. goofy reality yeah, TV show, show. It, it's not that bad. I can say, like, it's just not bad. It's actually really good. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I was I was going in with the expectation that it would be, like, it would be passable. It'd be good. Like, uh, fun, like, kind of fun bad? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or at least fun, a, a bit more relatable, not because, you know, yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm of that age. I've had no exposure. I don't. But it's a lot more relatable because it's not just attractive people in their late 20s trying to meet other attractive people it's wholesome it is middle-aged people yes it's it, it's very wholesome there are the similar amount of painfully awkward and cringe moments but they are a lot more relatable They're and a lot expected. more You're a lot more bachelor. enjoyable They're yeah. funny and i can say that like we are filming this on the week of the finale 
it is, oh, it is currently Tuesday. The ooh. finale comes out on, on Thursday. If you know, if we were recording um, t- to later show that, I would be the first one to say, "Let's record this right now." I need to get this off my chest. Alex but, actually told us not to come into work that day. <laughs> but genuinely, day for him. But genuinely, um, I'm somewhat excited for that, uh, mainly because I had no idea how this would end up being, and I can tell you right now, if you haven't watched and you're just starting to watch. Um, or if you're planning on eventually watching the show, I can tell you right now, it's not going to end the way that you think it, it will. Um, and there are many moments that you will actually be somewhat emotionally invested, even if you haven't ever experienced this. If you are a fan of reality TV, well, just go ahead and watch the show. I'm surprised that anyone that is into reality TV hasn't watched the show yet. Um, but going back to films... Hey, The Bachelor, give us money. Yeah, a, a, Sponsor a, ABC, us. Mickey Mouse. Uh, or, if, if, if or we... the, or, not not that we're asking for for a sponsor. <laughs> Again, not a sponsor of the show, but I do give an endorsement, an unpaid endorsement to watch the Golden Bachelor. I'm unpaid to tell to tell you this. And Alex However, Gold Star. I, I, Alex Gold Star. I would not be against perhaps you know flying out to wherever they okay. were. Uh, Every even, time, even if it's just like the the two episode bit where they're in Costa Rica, I wouldn't mind doing that. If you, if Disney, if you want to fly us out, um, but regardless, we're gonna we're gonna go back to films and we're gonna talk about the the movie spectacle of this year, which is Barbenheimer. I was gonna say, is it gonna be Barbenheimer? Is Barbenheimer. Where we're going? So the Barbie movie overall, excellent. I liked film. it excellent film um the acting is really well i think that whether you're looking at margot robbie or ryan gosling or kate mckinnon um everyone in that film is literally me is 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 fantastic in their roles literally um there are so many genuinely comedic moments in that film and again this was um after Super, I think this was, this was after the Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, this was actually the first time I've been that excited to see a film in theaters, despite the fact not being entirely invested in watching that film. That it, it, it pleasantly surprised me, and it was a whole thing. It was incredibly enjoyable. Um, there is no excuse to not have seen this movie unless if you're planning to watch it. Uh, and even if the hype um, is gone from watching it, it is just as enjoyable and just as um, funny. And I think to best consume that movie, you should watch it with friends. It's like if a Barbie was real life. Yes. And, oh, and it's, it's like the SpongeBob Sponge Out of Water movie? Yeah, but with Barbie. But like entirely live action. But they do it in a very clever way. But it's in the same blue of like, I'm a character and I'm going to go to the yes. real world. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. Right. But, it's, but it's really well done. And there are a lot of inside jokes like how Super Mario Brothers movie was. Now, on the polar opposite of this, um, with Oppenheimer, very serious, very historically accurate, very, very well researched. Killian Murphy as J. Robert Oppenheimer, really well done. You will hate Robert Downey Jr.'s character after the bomb explodes. And I will say, there's an hour of runtime. And all of that is used to give um, cultural, historical, political, and societal um, context for how we kind of portray J. Robert Oppenheimer after the movie, um, or after you know the dropping of the atomic bombs. And it, it would have been ideal to watch it in theaters, but if you can't, then I would actually watch it alone or with a group of friends that you can kind of just have a, a nerdy discussion about it like I would because I'm, I'm a big history and film nerd. And now we can't talk about anything for any period of time without talking about the memes. And yeah, so we're here. As, as a fan of memes and 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 what do we think about when we think about 2023 and this its is memes? Loose. This is like that we can say on air. This is from what we've like seen I, on the internet. As I am just not me. allowed to talk about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You go. <laughs> I just I interrupted you. No, 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 no. You go. Is this, this is, is just, just like, like our our view on 
like the content of the internet of the past year, just as teenagers and Alex. We mentioned Barbenheimer, and I think all the memes that were coming out around the time of the the, the co-release of those movies, not that they were planned, but um, the like going to see Oppenheimer I was gonna ask, while wearing a fully like pink, pink suit, suit and like a trilby or something. Do you think that the Barbenheimer meme contributed to the popularity of both yeah. movies? Yeah, yeah, because there is this is like watching. Do you think it was an industry plan? No, plans. but this is like the equivalent of watching um, what's a serious movie? Twilight. The Joker. Good it's example. Joker. This Not is, the, this, the this, this is like watching Cars. No. Uh, and then watching Joker. It's like pitting like the Lego Movie versus Saw. <laughs> But, but like, it's, it's, it's that kind of absurdity, but like, with two completely different topics. So, like, do you. So the, the, like the actual movie. Venn diagram of the Barbie movie and Oppenheimer is so small, but it lends itself to Perfect. being hilariously, uh, you know, juxtaposed between the two movies, and it just made it an experience. I watched. The Barbie movie, and then I think the next week, no, it was the next day, I went to see um, Barbie on its release day on on that Friday, and then I watched Oppenheimer the following day. Um, or you were in the middle of the hype. No, it was actually the opposite. I actually watched Oppenheimer first, and then Barbie the next day, and I don't regret doing that because I think it's actually somewhat worse to go into. Oppenheimer having seen such a positive and such a yeah, so hilarious pick you up pick, yeah you know, gets you feeling better again. despite the fact that it's very existential um if you're five you don't know what's going on yeah but, Oppenheimer. but 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 really like like you go from I went from the one night feeling very existential about something that happened 80 years ago <laughs> To something very existential know. about the the social worth that we put on a doll, and I, I I didn't know he started how sobbing. to handle that. <laughs> He's like, I am and I, and I think no one did, and I think that everyone just kind of kind of laughed at everything and and made it into it's a like, meme, and, and I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. it was funny, but. I'm whether you were wearing a suit and tie to watch Barbie or whether you were watching beach clothes to watch Oppenheimer, it was great. I, for me, I think my favorite meme this year was the blue avatar guy. Show the screenshot of my Instagram feed. Show all the screenshot <laughs> of my Instagram feed. Do you know this? Avatar? There's no. You don't know about the blue no. avatar There's a stupid guy? image of a Google green right avatar now. guy. There's a stupid right image now. of it. It's a stupid <laughs> angle of the guy, and he's just saying <laughs> some. <laughs> it's the blue and avatar it's guy. It's always just some, some corny and dad that joke. Like Gorbel. Aren't the not even that dad joke? <laughs> the Gorbel, the Gorbel do T-shirt, no T letter. Like it's not even funny. It was everywhere. But the thing that annoyed me said. about it, <laughs> annoyed me about it. I'm trying to go on Instagram to like look at like cute outfits or like dogs or something, and I scroll and it's this. I don't know what's and it didn't stop either. It was I think the other thing that's happening right now is 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 Gail Lewis. That's the other big one that I think is gonna go down in the history books of November 2023 is Gail Lewis. Um <laughs> yeah. Gail Lewis, it up. Gail Lewis is a trooper. It, it registered with me that memes are not tailor-made for me my humor changes around them and then i realized that's bad so i don't know memes this year have been interesting but yeah right now i'm on gail lewis that's pretty fun i know i'm 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 making a prediction gail i'm lewis. making a prediction for this year if you're predicting memes you're in a losing battle here. watch watch you're in a right losing now battle. it's november what it's november 28th it is the date of recording and of course this will carry on for a couple days but this is uh currently november 28th chestnuts roasting on an open fire can you believe it guys christmas just a week away those are my two predictions i believe they're coming back I believe Christmas that, is just a week away. Can you believe it, guys? Can Christmas is just it? a week away. I'm I, betting those are coming back. And then Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I believe that one is coming back. He is making a comeback and he is making a new one. He has been talking about this. That is, you may not know what I'm talking about, Alex. 
Do you know either of these? No. Oh yeah, that's that's that is my prediction for memes that are coming back. Uh, see, see, okay, okay, this this is different. I thought you were gonna make a prediction as to how the memes would be next year. Oh no, that's that's anyone's game. But yeah, that's, that's why I was like, you're, you're in a losing battle there. Yeah, no, you can't predict that because who is who is to expect a Walmart employee retiring after you know working for ten years to be the biggest meme of November? Like, I, you can't. She's, she's not, not a meme. meme. She's she's, she's a hero. Idol. I I have seen a lot of memes in the past year, including uh, a minion uh, falling into Latin America, and I that just think? being it's like a two second clip. Um, there's also. As per the thumbnail, uh, <laughs> the Kevin image James. of Kevin of Kevin James in the uh, King of Queens photo shoot that has uh, that has popped up and resurfaced and has become a meme, and I and I enjoy it. I love, love Kevin James. She um, asks if you drink your water, you say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay hydrated, guys. There's, uh, things are like um, the the one actress or oh, I don't know what she does as a profession, but like the the Bentley girl that just like oh, that. That girl that one. She, or, she goes, she goes, she goes like Bentley. Bentley. It's and, so it's, stupid. And, and and I have enjoyed the many copycats of that. Mm -hmm. Um and especially with the, the the ones that have like just people just looking or like slapping something and saying something yeah, in an like accent. and slapping going forward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, or the one that I have saved on on my Instagram saved uh, is uh, one of the guys from the Wiggles slapping big red car and then saying big red car. You know, uh, I just realized great. another meme from this year, or I guess another meme, I guess another icon would be Liver King. Disclaimer, don't do this was with that people. Was this year? Liver King was this year. There's also <laughs> that clip of uh, Pedro Pascal laughing and then crying crying and i feel like that has been the mood um yeah pedro pascal he he blew up this year yeah pedro yeah, pascal I have absolutely it's like, walking, okay. the walking, not the walking dead i'm so silly no, um, um I, w the last of us the last of us thank yeah. you i was like i've never played the game like i wouldn't say out of nowhere because obviously people blow up idiot i saw him yesterday yeah, I haven't seen this in the news. What are you talking about? Uh, it, I wouldn't say out of nowhere, but certainly just all of a sudden after like one or two rolls, and now he instantly became like a heartthrob. I'm okay with this. I need. I am too. I I need to make this clear to the general public. I need a Burt Reynolds documentary with Pedro Pascal playing Burt Reynolds. Do you know who Burt Reynolds yes. is? I need this. This is, a, it, I know it's not just a me thing. Bird Reynolds is my favorite heartthrob, but the picture of him laying, put that one picture. Actually, you can't. Don't put that one picture. Put a good picture of him. I need Pedro Pascal playing Bird Reynolds in a documentary, and I need them. I, like, this is, this is such a strong movie. But the documentary doesn't include his older years. Yeah, we're talking about Prime, like Smokey and the Bandit, Bird Reynolds. You just want to see Pedro Pascal. There was also that clip of Danny DeVito crying. <laughs> In that one scene in It's Always Sunny. Yes. Uh, and the same. I got it now. It, 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 it's, it's also been a meme. I'm trying a 20 minute microwaved honey bun for the first time. <laughs> we'll be right back to this holiday special, but first let's get into the district updates as part of our Can't Miss Minutes. As a reminder, Wednesday, December 20th is the last day of the fall semester before winter break. This coming Wednesday, high school students will be released at 12.45 p.m. All other students will be dismissed at regular times. Students will return to school on Monday, January 8th, and we will see you there. Moving on now, and congratulations to Ms. Renita Bolton, a bus router in the CCSD Transportation Department, for being named the CCSD Employee of the Month for December. As a reminder, anyone in our community can nominate a CCSD employee for employee of the month simply go to bit.ly slash ccsdeom to get started nominations for our january employee of the month are due friday january 5th moving on now and ccsd has been announced as one of the 2023 leading edge award winners by the georgia school board association the award recognizes school systems throughout the state for their innovative design and implementation of projects and programs that are having a significant positive impact on student achievement and engagement. Go to our website at clark.k12.ga.us for more details. And the Athens Community Career Academy is now accepting applications from students who will be in grades 10 through 12 
for the 2024-25 school year. Students will have a chance to complete high school and college level career pathway courses in addition to their coursework at their home high school. Go to bit.ly slash ACCAAPP for more info and to get started. And finally, make sure to keep track of all the news around CCSD by subscribing to the Better Together newsletter curated by my colleague and friend of the podcast, Scott Thompson. Go to clark.k12.ga.us for more information on how to get the Better Together newsletter. Now back to Owen and Jules and some more Studio 595. Normally, we would have you know, some news articles or some interesting things that have happened between the episodes. But this is our general overview of our favorite things that have happened this year in news. So I will give you two of my favorites. One is Willie Nelson turned 90 this year and is still playing music and enjoying life, which I'm very happy about. My second favorite thing that has happened this year has been the man going around locking escape room employees in escape rooms or the building more so that they're in bike locking the doors together and sliding a piece of paper in between the door with clues for the combination of the code. It is not the first time it has happened, if you can tell from this footage, and it has to be one of my favorite things from this year. Some of our OG fans will remember me bringing up the release of Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon, and I'm happy to report that it has quickly become one of my favorite games for multiple reasons. Um, it has some of the best environment and designs that I've seen in a game recently. Corporations are warring for power and resources, and they built these giant machines called armored cores to explode each other better. You play as one of these armored cores, trying your best not to get exploded, and allying or making any enemies with whatever corporations you want along the way. I really like how you can change the outcome of the story to what you want it to be, and I highly recommend that you check it out if you like big robots. Oxford Dictionary has named Riz the word of the year for 2023. You see the hope going like exiting my soul. So I always try to bring the wildest stories to pop culture updates, and uh, to wrap up the year, I think that I have found one of the best stories to tell. Uh, one of the wildest stories uh, this year actually took place last year, but follow me because it gets wild. A man going by the username of LazyBear90 on Reddit uh, explained his predicament this past year. The California man whose name is Michael uh, had sent a donation for urgent food relief needed in Bangladesh. He made his donation and not too long after his bank had actually informed him of a suspiciously large amount of money that was in his expenses. Now, it turns out that while typing in his credit card information, rather than donating $150 as he intended, uh, he typed additional digits and the first, uh, I imagine the first number of his credit card or so, and ended up donating more than $15,000. That's a predicament there. Now, eventually he did get in contact with GoFundMe for a refund, although it would take several days to get an actual refund to go through. That's where the story should end, you know, a simple mistake. However, the next morning, Michael here checks and sees multiple notifications on his phone and texts and everything, uh, including a friend request from a man in Bangladesh who is tagging him and thanking him for his donation while being surrounded by the people that he was going to initially help out uh, due to a large sum of you know donation money over fifteen thousand dollars that he had accidentally sent now eventually the story ends he and michael gets his refund he does send fifteen hundred dollars after his mistake that is also not how the story ends because it's kind of hard to not go viral after you know donating fifteen thousand dollars getting a refund and then trying to make things you know all right and so the story goes viral and within days the goal of twenty six thousand dollars in donations that michael here accidentally helped achieve but then rescinded because he didn't want to send fifteen thousand dollars was smashed by sympathetic donors who actually did donate, including some who donated up to $5,000, and the fundraiser ended up raising $118,000 out of their $26,000 goal. So a whirlwind of a story, 
We go from California to Bangladesh to a, a wild five digit donation towards, you know, a very noble cause sent erroneously and, you know, getting a refund. And then eventually people got wind of it and ended up donating and, and got more than four times the actual amount that they were trying to fundraise. Overall, comedic, lighthearted story that thankfully ends well for everyone involved. So to wrap up the show, we will wrap it up like we did last year for the holiday special and do Would I Lie to You? And for new listeners or people that haven't watched uh, the British show Would I Lie to You before, um, it is simply we are going to say uh, a prompt or say a story. Uh, the beginning of a story it can just be a statement. Uh, and the other two will be asking questions uh, to kind of decipher whether they're being truthful or not, trying to decipher the story and see if it's legitimate or not. And so, so that Owen and Jules can get a good, I guess, practice at this, I will be telling my story first. I have a cutout of all four members of Weezer uh, from a poster. I've cut up a poster and the four members of Weezer are in my office in random locations scattered around. I believe it. I don't. Ask I saw questions. From which album? The Blue Album. Yeah, that's what I figured. Where, because we can't go check this right now. Where are the cutouts? Approximately how big are they? Uh, they are the size of a normal standard poster. I have just cut them out. So it's a normal size poster. Normal size poster. And you, you cut heard? these. Yeah, you no, cut up I've a Weezer never poster. Had... I, I cut up a Weezer poster. First off, I've I've been in Alex's office. I've never seen any Weezer paraphernalia before. Paraphernalia. Yeah. <laughs> Is it was this recent? Um, I started it. Um, I had two cut out in I want to say either August or September. And then I had the other two cut out. I had just left them um, in my desk. I hadn't cut them out because I'd just forgotten to. I cut out the other two this week. Where? Where are they? I know that Rivers Cuomo is on the back of my um, door entering my uh, office. Okay, where so, are the other three? So not when you open the door. We're not talking like, about like when geography. You, when you open the yeah. door, it's like wrapped around. Yeah, yeah. but where, where are the other three? There's one, I have a uh, card from my first day at work here at CCSD uh, where everyone was, you know, welcoming me. There is one tucked in behind that letter. It is visible, but it is tucked in. Uh, another one is uh, at my desk um, in the like outside of the drawers, but all like on the inside of the desk. Um, like facing outwards so basically where i put my legs like if i were to put my legs right here um one of the members of weezer is right here like inside of my desk but the still well. visible yes and the last one is in a drawer on the right side of my desk the lowest drawer there's nothing else in that drawer and if you open it up it is just uh one of the members of weezer I've never heard you talk about Weezer before. I've never heard you express your interest in Weezer before. I don't think you will have Weezer posters. Up. I, I, I can tell you right now, I'm not that. I'm not a big Weezer fan. So you have it up just because it's funny. Uh, yes, because they're just standing. They're just they're just there in my office. They're it's, just you just get it's just them letters. just going like this. I, it's it's I, a blue I, album. I it's an album everyone knows. I'm I'm sticking with my gut. Originally, when you first was, how big did you say they were? Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you never gave us height. So, us like so the the poster itself is like about yay big, right? We just, or just no, how, not, tall, not even. how tall are the how tall are the, the we people? How tall um, are the Weezers? <laughs> the Weezers, uh, about yay big. I believe it. I think that. You, you, I saw shame in your soul. I, I have, you. I have cut them out, but I've cut them out like when you the, cut out, when top. you said you cut out the Weezer poster. Yes. Yes. I saw like, yeah, you I know saw, what? like your sins crawling on your back. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with, I'm going to go against what Jules says. So we're equal in our scores. So if I'm right, and we'll see who's right or who's wrong. So 
What are you believing? Uh, are, you, are you saying that I am telling the truth or am I telling a lie, I Jules? think you're lying. I think you're truthing. Okay, I can tell you right now. It is true. All right, fair enough. I will, I will provide pictures uh, here. Would you, um, would you like me to go next? Uh, sure, Owen, okay. uh, currently behind. I have met Yo Gabba Gabba. Which one? All of them. Uh, in what like order? The, the, Where? The cast? Like the entire cast? I have met DJ Lance. I have met all four of the members of Yo Gabba Gabba. Brody? And I believe the comedian Fluffy was there as well. Oh, uh, oh, I love that guy. Uh, where did you meet them? Atlanta. Where? Uh, it was a Yo Gabba Gabba concert. When was this? Uh... I don't know. I was I was m much younger than I am now. Like how young? I was elementary school age. I mean, I was at the age of wanting to watch Yo Gabba Gabba. Okay, and you so, met them. And this I was, met them. I did. I did this meet was them before or after the concert. So I met DJ Lance before the concert, and he thought I was pretty cool, and so he invited me to the after party. What? This sounds like the beginning to a horror movie. What? Two, two questions here. Mm hmm. I love you, DJ Lance. Uh, uh, were you accompanied by adults? Yes, yeah, so, uh, yes, this was DJ my parents. Lance. Yes, this was my parents. Where I, was that? Like, where did you meet him? In oh, regards? we met him at a restaurant before the show, where we went to go to restaurant. Dinner. Dude, I was like five. I don't know. And what made DJ Lance think that you were cool? So I was wearing a Yo Gabba Gabba T-shirt, and he's like this kid. He's obviously going, and so he, he, he got up to him and he you said, know, "Passes." I see something in you. He 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 thought I was pretty cool, and I mean he was wearing his normal clothes. Um, you know, I've met him, I've talked to him. I mean, I didn't probably couldn't speak that well. Except what do you remember from the concert? What do I remember from the concert? Um, what did he smell like? I I'm not sure what he smelled like. I remember coming home from the concert. I remember the concert was very good. I remember they played the bubble song. The song about bubbles, and I remember Sing the, the bubble song. I don't remember. I remember there's a party in my tummy. There's a party in my Did tummy. Did you live so in Athens at the time? So, so yummy. Did I live in Athens at the time? Yeah, yes. I've lived in I've lived in the same house my entire life. And so you went to your house in Athens after the concert, correct? Can't relate. So you're Expecting me to believe that you had enough time to meet DJ Lance at a restaurant. Uh, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, is I met DJ Lance at a restaurant. We went to the Yo Gabba Gabba show and then we went home. Yes. I, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So. But after you know, the show. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. A after the Yo Gabba Gabba show, which I imagine if it's, you know, four kids, it would have been around 2 or 3 p.m. Uh, you're saying it was, before it was then. later in the afternoon. Before then. You met DJ Lance at a restaurant was, in Atlanta, a, which I imagine was like some sort of Fluffy brunch. was using the bathroom. He came out, he said hi, he was eating with DJ Lance. You were avoiding the question, Owen. What question? You remember after the show. I which... remember specifically driving home from the show and being like, that was such a cool show. Because You're changing your story now. No. <laughs> I couldn't drive. I don't know what what no, but, you're but, to but, come but, up but you were saying you were saying when you were home. That's what, that's how you started off. What do you mean? Like like you said uh, after the show. I believe when him when you were home because Owen is a so, Owen has never told a lie in his life. That's not true. Um, that was a I, lie. I remember <laughs> after the show. I don't remember how I got there, but I have a weird memory of a room. To me, I was seemed about this size. Yeah, I know it was bigger. It was probably about the size of the office that's like right there. And I remember there were all the members of Yo Gabba Gabba kind of waddling around because they were in big costumes. And I remember I sat on the floor and I colored. And all the like the walls in the room were different colors. And I remember the lights being like kind of dim. Like it was kind of eerie, very unsettling for a young kid to have these like big creatures wandering around how many other kids were in that room from what i can remember it was mostly like it was more adults than kids because it was probably like two parents to a kid 
Uh, I don't know how much the VIP stuff costed, so I don't think it was probably a lot of kids. But, I think, but your, I think parents, your parents did indeed have VIP tickets. Because DJ Lance put us on the list. Would you okay. say this experience is akin to the live action Where the Wild Things Are? Um, <laughs> no, but I have seen where the live action Where the Wild Things Are puppets and the costumes. They're scary, but They're really, it. really creepy. They have their own room in the puppet museum. And it, this is so off topic. This is a real story. I walked into the room and I got goosebumps and I left and I didn't want to go back in. I'll show. I'll put a picture he, up. He, he got, a, he he got like, a, he got like a primal sense of there. oncoming death. I had, a, I had like a, a fear of like this <laughs> thing's gonna get me. But I'll put a picture up because I, I was with your him. heart froze, your feet sunk in place. It's your fight or flight. I went up my spine. But yeah. Do you think I'm telling the truth? Or do you so, think I'm lying? So, Jules, what are you thinking? Uh, I think you're telling the truth just because like I, I've been I've been to one of those shows at well as well in Atlanta and I haven't heard of I, I didn't get like invited backstage or anything but I have heard stories of those people being friendly. No wait, I think you're lying. You've now. heard stories? Okay. I've heard, no wait, no. Now I think you're lying because I was lying. I mean, I, 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 I think that you are lying because you have very selective memory about this experience and also no. the, the fact that you, 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 your family didn't have VIP tickets, but and you were put on the DJ list Lance by DJ put us Lamb, on the list, uh, he, which he I find somewhat unlucky. He because personally put me on the list. I, I, I think that's that's. I'm so exhausted. Really unlikely, considering the uh, the revenue that that venue probably lost because of that. Even if it was just you know a couple people, it is still. I mean, it was three people. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think my brother. My brother was very young at this point. He was probably one or two. So I'm gonna say I was probably in kindergarten or pre-k kindergarten. I want to say somewhere in there. But I'm not. You you get. Was any... your brother with you at the show? No, he was with my grandparents. Okay. Uh, I still think that you're lying. Is uh, that your final guess, Jules? What are you? What are you looking up? I think. Uh, what 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 grade is a one to two year old usually in? He was not in oh, a grade yet. Yeah, he was school. very young. If you okay. So so okay. your your call is that that was, was a lie. Math. Yes, I am officially. I am on the fence about it because uh, there are like certain. Things that I do believe are definitely plausible. That I went to a Yo Gabba Gabba show when I was younger. Uh, yeah. Or, um, what's What's plausible to you that I remember like being in a creepy like dark room with a bunch of kids coloring? Yeah, like, that, does that, seem, that does seem off, but that does seem like, like a memory Stranger that you things, just randomly like the attached to. Room and Stranger Things. I have this really weird fan memory, and I got to put this out there because I don't know if any other people remember this. And I went online, and I can't find anything about this. Do you remember it was in the shopping center with Takri Laparia, and it had vision video, and there was like a kids haircut place that had a giant playground inside of it? Do you remember this? Yes, it was inflatable. Some mm -hmm. of it. No, 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 no. It was a whole like big wooden playground. It was. Took the up, like, the entire world wall. of wonder. No, oh, oh. Like, no, world of wonder is <laughs> on the east side. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Um, yeah, true, false. All right. uh, I'll, I'll say, I'll say false. I believe you, Spooky Bear. Okay. No, just because like there were Yo Gabba Gabba shows in Atlanta, and I did go to one, and the, they were nice. You said you were lying about going to one though. So what? you're saying true? No, I'm saying yeah, it's true. And you're saying it's false. I am saying it's false. You said to, to go with our God. I see. <laughs> Owen has shown me a picture of him meeting DJ Lance. <laughs> oh my hold gosh. On. Hold on. Now hold on. Now just hold on one moment. Let me find my photo of me with all the Yo Gabba Gabba characters. Okay, yeah. We, we, because that, that will kind of confirm this that you are just uh, adding it's to a the low, story. It's a low res photo, but how does it feel to be wrong? That's actually, yeah. that's 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 right. is hard. Yeah, put that up right now. Yeah, that's. I still have that shirt that I'm wearing too. I kept that, that shirt. That's a that's a mixtape cover. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that's that's me. How I met Yo Gabba Gabba members and DJ Lance, and he was he was pretty cool. That was my mom's Facebook profile photo for years. Uh, it was me, her, and DJ Lance. So to wrap up, uh, Jules, what is your story? Okay, this is like rare appearance of young jewels i hear a lot that i look completely different than how i did like i think 12 and under because puberty hit me very very much very hard well, we can put like a can we put like a side by side on the Before screen and after oh yeah it's like it's real bad but um this was like 2017 little 10 year old me was at the atlanta zoo with my family and i was looking they had like these cactuses around 
Just like on cacti. display. Cacti. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like I had to say it. <laughs> they had the cacti around. Cacti. You just said cacti. <laughs> Leave me alone! <laughs> <laughs> they had the cacti everywhere, and I was like a little child, and I never like retained in my head. I looked at the cactus, and I was like, "Dang, that doesn't look spiky at all." Because I had expected them to look like how they do in cartoons, with those big, exaggerated yeah. spikes. Ouch. I didn't know that they just have like tiny little hairs that get mm -hmm. in your skin and hurt real bad. So my little ten-year-old self, to 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 test my theory that cactuses aren't actually spiky, cacti, I, cacti aren't actually spiky. I I go up and I and I put my entire hand around one and I grab it as hard as I can and I go, this doesn't hurt at all, and I let go and I squeeze my hand again. I feel like the episode name of this episode. Would just be <laughs> my cheese. You okay? What just happened? My tooth on the microphone. Are you okay? Yeah. I was even worse. I wasn't even looking. I didn't even we'll see this keep, happen. I'll keep that audio bit in. But it was very painful. We spent that day. It was my oh. mother and one of the nurses there. They had to like individually pick out yep. each needle with That's the That's a long day. And it was, it's a core memory for me. It's the cactuses are actually spiky. Cacti. So Jules, carry on. Cactuses. So I'm gonna. So I was. <laughs> I was. Uh, that's really the whole story. It was just a bad day. <laughs> My parents were just mad at me. They were like, "Why would you do that?" I was like, "Cause there weren't any spikes on that." I one. couldn't see it. So, <laughs> so Owen, oh, true or false? Or if you have any questions, where were you again? Atlanta Zoo. Is there a garden area in the zoo that they have the cacti? No, they were just like, they were just like, they were just like, for environment, I think. They just had them planted around. It's, it's I, were, they, were they around some specific animals? Not that I can remember. They were just around. When you, like when you walk in, there's a bunch of rocks and cactuses. I think it was like a, it might've been like a themed thing, but uh it's false okay what what that's my what, that's what my time consensus. of year was this this was like this was very hot this was during the summer here here's where i'm gonna okay. here's where i'm gonna have to do the i'm um, actually bit um, first thing you see when you walk in is the flamingos it's the big entrance part oh yes oh no i'm si no i never said it was at the entrance Replay. Right. Replay that one. <laughs> All right. Wait, wait, did I say that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I said that. That's, <laughs> that's what we're about. After this, we get to the cactuses. Like, I was trying to, like, so after the intro, illustrate the, was the we cactuses? had walked into the zoo. So you walk in the zoo, and there's the flamingos, and then there's the cactuses? I don't... Yes, I don't remember. Well, since the elephants. I don't remember how far into the zoo the cactuses were. I know that I picked them up. Okay. And what I remember about that day was spending the whole day in the nurse's office. Where's the nurse's office in uh, Atlanta Zoo? It's at wherever the uh, visitor center is. Yeah, I believe that. But, yeah. Mm. My story. How old were you? I was 10. It does sound like something that a 10 year old would do. Yeah, I was, okay. Whenever I was like two, I put my hand in the toaster right after the toast popped up because I okay, thought that that meant was... the bread wasn't hot or the, the toaster wasn't hot because immediately once the bread's out, it's not hot. And I feel like this is the same <laughs> logic. I, I understand the subject. Because everybody was too, I was sitting on the counter see? and I was like, chunk, put my hand in there because I wanted to, it was like, just a like, piece of see. bread. Just to see just for to yourself. See. I believe this. Field research. <laughs> I believe I believe this, field research. Oh yeah. What yeah. do you think, Alex? Uh, it, it, it definitely did sound uh, legitimate. I'll say that it's that you're telling the truth. You guys are both right. I am telling the truth. Hey. And my parents can back me up. I may have gotten like the little location details like at well, in the zoo wrong, yeah. but I believe I, I can get we can like we can like edit those because it was the like I wonder I wonder what happens. Room, all I remember is <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's but, that, but like a baby that, crying. That, that is that is something that a ten year old you, would do after sticking their hand in cacti. 
I did it at Senior Soul also, but that's a different story. <laughs> when was this? Uh, was this before? Did you not learn your your lesson the, after? Uh, I'll say it was it was it was 2020, 2019. Oh, thank you guys for watching uh, this holiday special. special. I know that it wasn't necessarily a holiday, but it, it, you know, silly fun times talking about the, the the best things that have happened this year or the most memorable. Um, we made it our own. Yeah, and uh, Jules, what is your goal for next year? Make it. Oh, and get my money up and not my funny up. <laughs> that was really cringy. I'm sorry. That's uh, saying in the end. No, no, no. We're, yeah, we're keeping that in there. More photography stuff. We're keeping that in there, and we're now putting that, like a now, big golden. Now your mic is muted. <laughs> We're putting that. We're putting that as like a its own highlight on the YouTube channel. Yeah, it's gonna be, what do you want to do next year? Get my money up. It's gonna be a short. It's gonna be five Maybe seconds. Yeah. It's gonna be you. It's gonna be me asking and you responding. I don't want to be a broke Benson. <laughs> um, but really, thank you everyone, and expect a bonus episode, uh, audio only. Audio only. Similar to how we did it in season one. Uh, that'll be coming out December twentieth. At least that's the goal for right now. Please don't hold me to it. But you know, if, hey, we, if, if, we, if it we happens, it. if it happens, you know, maybe give a thanks. Um, like us on everything. Um, and you can expect that primarily on Spotify. We'll make a decision as to whether we put it on YouTube or not. Um, but for now. Uh, we hope that you have a wonderful end of the year and happy holidays. Happy holidays. Enjoy your break. Um, although this is coming out on the fifteenth, so you, know, you still have a couple days left. Of, Lock your of, doors. Of don't school. let the fat man in. Until next year, when we see you again. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Enjoy the end of the semester. Enjoy the end of this year. And we hope that you have a wonderful start to twenty twenty four. For oh, now, this bad. has been uh, this has been producer Alex. I'm Owen. Yeah. Yes, it's I'm Jules. And this has been Studio 595. Five, five, five. Five, five.